Okay, so we've looked at some of the basic drawing commands. Um, and for the most part, we were creating our, our shapes using numbers relative to the exact screen coordinates. So we were, you know, thinking from our zero, zero point in the upper left across and, you know, using the exact numbers. Um, but we'll see in a minute why sometimes that's not the best way to go. Um, and in fact, we can use some built in uh, values that P5JS gives us that are uh, based on the width and the height of the screen. So let's go ahead and um, open a new sketch in the P5JS editor. Um, now, so far we've used the create canvas command. Remember that when we run it, it creates our canvas over here um, and sets the width, the first number, and the height, our second number. Um, but what happens, especially because our code is running in the web browser, is um, everyone's looking at the, your, your sketch in a different screen and a different size. So it might be on their um, desktop in the browser, it might be on a phone, it might be on a watch or some other device. Um, and because those have different resolutions and sizes, you want your sketch to be able to adapt to that in some kind of way. Um, later, as you start thinking about um, things like gallery installations for these projects too, this becomes really important. Imagine you have um, a projector set up in the gallery that's running your sketch. Um, that projector might have a different resolution too, or you might wanna be able to adjust it. And you don't wanna have, um, you know, imagine a, a sketch easily can be hundreds of lines of code, you know, a complex project. Um, imagine having to go through and changing all of the numbers that you had created just so that it kind of like works on a different projector. That would be a total nightmare. So luckily, um, P5JS gives us an option to um, access the width and the height of the canvas, and then we can make everything relative to those numbers. Um, we're gonna talk in a little while about variables in more detail, but um, width and height in this case are variables that P5JS creates for us. So the easiest way that we can see this is using console.log and um, I type in the word width here, this is lowercase, and you'll notice that it changes color when I do this. Um, and that's an indicator that P5JS knows that width is something special. Um, and uh, the, you know, it's not just some word or a variable that you've created. Um, I'm also gonna do console.log height. And now when I run my sketch, I should see these values show up down here in the console. Now, the reason there's a number two next to this um, is because often we might be printing like a ton of information, you know, imagine in this draw loop in an interactive project, um, and it just prevents like duplicates of the same number. So this means that there's two numbers that are 400. Um, if I change this to be 300, 400, now we see it prints 300 and it prints 400. Um, so this is really a, a great place to start and we wanna be able to use height and width. Um, but one other thing that we might find um, create canvas. A lot of our examples, we're going to work with a fixed fixed size, but it is possible to make your sketch adapt to the size of the window. So instead of uh, a preset numbers here, you can use window width and window height. And what happens is when P5JS, um, you start your sketch, it automatically reads the size of the browser window on whatever device you're on and resizes the canvas to fit. So in this case, it's fitting to this little preview window over here. Later, we'll see how to run sketches full screen and things like that. Um, and then it'll adapt to be fill the whole browser screen. And um, we can see how this right now, you know, it's not resizing with this. We'll look at that in a little bit. Um, but now if I run it again, it gets a little bigger or smaller. Um, yeah, so let's then move down to the draw and we can um, try adding some commands here and think about how to do this in relation to the, to the screen. Um, actually, I'm gonna add back in the console.log with and console.log height. And now when I run this, um, I can see, so my size right now is 339 pixels wide and 596 pixels high. That's a pretty odd number, um, but that's okay. We can work with that. So we can imagine the old way that we might specify a shape. Let's say we wanted to do this in the center of the screen. So I might do fill zero, no stroke. And let's say I wanna draw a circle right in the center. In the last video, we didn't talk about the circle command, but um, it's just like ellipse. It takes an X, Y center coordinate. And then um, instead of two numbers for the width and the height, it's just one number because the circle is the same all the way around. 
So in this case, we would, um, you know what, just to make this a little easier, let's go back to 400, 400, because I can't do math that early in the morning. Okay, so now I'm 400 by 400. Let's say we want to put a circle right in the center of the screen. Um, in the way we've done it previously, we would do 200, 200, and then let's say we want this to be 100 pixels. Cool. So there's my circle in the middle of the screen. But if we change this to be 300, 300, now our circle isn't in the middle. The proportion of the size of that circle has changed. Um, and so we can see why this may be not the ideal kind of way to do this. So we're going to call this the uh, hard coded way. So hard coded means numbers that are like literally coded into the software. Uh, but instead, we can um, do this with width and height variables. So um, we can do the same command circle, but instead of 200, 200, we can say width divided by 2, and height divided by 2, and then our size for now, let's leave it at 100. And I'm going to just comment out this line here. Um, we talked about comments in some of the earlier videos. Another really helpful way of using them is to comment out lines of code that you want to, you don't want to delete it, but you don't want it to run. Um, this way you can have some options or um, leave stuff in there for informational purposes. So now if I run this, we'll see width divided by two, height divided by two puts it right in the center. And if I change my dimensions, it's always going to be in the same spot. So there's one other thing that we can try changing here, which is, so we've done position and this is really helpful. Um, let's say we also wanna put some shapes. Well, let, you know what, let's do a couple more. And then what we'll do is we'll change the size of these also to be relative to the screen. Um, so let's maybe put some circles in these quadrants over here. So let's say I want it to be a quarter of the way over and a quarter of the way down. I could say circle width divided by four, height divided by four. And let's make this smaller. Let's make this uh, 30, for example. Cool. So that one's easy. Um, we also, oops, got some leftover lines there. Uh, we also want to put a circle here, here, and here. And these become a little trickier, and we need to think about this a bit. So, um, and I like to label these, especially when they kind of look the same. So this would be upper left. Now, let's say we want to draw the one that's over here. That would be width. And if you want to pause for a second and try to guess, that would be good. Um, but the easiest way I think to do this is width minus width divided by four. So a quarter of the way from all the way across this way. Remember, this point is zero, zero, and the numbers get bigger this way and this way. Width divided by four, width minus width divided by four, height divided by four, and then 30. Let's just be upper right. And then let's do a sanity check and just make sure it's working right. We're running it. Um, this is also a really good idea just to make sure things are working the way you think they are rather than writing a whole program and then trying to figure out what's going wrong. Do a little bit, run it, um, make changes. This is something we'll talk about a lot in this class, which is called iterative development. That's where you do that kind of process. You try something, you change it, you try something, you change it. Um, okay, so then we can do the one down here. Actually, let's do this one in the lower right. So that would be width divided by four, height minus height divided by four. That would be our lower right. Super. And then our last one would be width minus width divided by four, height minus height divided by four. 30. And there we go. So this is a brain bender. If you haven't done this before, this is hard to think this way. It's hard to think about numbers in the first place plus relative coordinates based on the width and the height. But um, this is really, really powerful. And I really recommend as much as you can practicing using this rather than specific numbers. Um, it's going to make your sketches way easier to change. Right now, this looks harder to read, but I think later it's actually easier because the numbers are meaningful based on the width and the height rather than just random values that it's hard to figure out what they mean. Um, so let's make one more change, and that is the size of our circle here in the middle is also fixed. So if I change the size here, 
you'll notice that it stays the same size. So it's gonna get more and more cramped. And if we made this, for example, really small, our shapes are gonna to start to overlap. So we can also not just define position, but we can define size relative. So let's say I want this to be um, a quarter of the size. That's about what we had it before. So we can also do width divided by four. And now that's gonna be scaled. And maybe this one should be, I don't know, width divided by 10. We can try that and see how that looks. Just change all these. Cool. And so now when I make this bigger, our proportions should all stay the same. It just like expands the whole thing, which is exactly what we want to do. Um, one more thing that we might want to add. So now if we change this, we talked in the, uh, in the beginning about instead of specific height and width, we can do window width and window height. And this also works, which is great. So it's going to fill the space. Now, the only limitation here is that we are um, making our sizes relative to the width and not the height. And in this case, um, you know, it's narrower than it is tall. That may work for us. It may not. Later, we'll look at some ways that we could have it sort of decide, um, do whichever is smaller with their height divided by four or something like that. Um, but for now, this should be just fine. Um, but what we might want to do, you know, imagine you're working in the web browser and you try to resize your window and you want your sketch to elastically kind of change with it. Um, and right now it doesn't, it's fixed. So we can add at the very, very bottom of the sketch all the way down past the draw. We can say function window resized. And um, we're going to talk again more in coming sections about what functions are and what you know what this is doing in more detail. Uh, but essentially, anytime the window is resized, this little bit of code gets run. And we want to say resize canvas window width uh, window height. So every time the canvas is re uh, uh, the window sorry the window is resized, the canvas gets resized to fit. So now when I run this, we'll see. It grows as do the size of our shapes, which is exactly what we want, which is pretty cool. So for your project uh, for this section where you're gonna be making drawings of robots using code, um, if you can in any way, please try to use width and height in your drawing commands as much as possible. And if you really want, you can try adding the resized to your sketch as well so that it can dynamically change shape. And if you um, you can, I think as much as you can practice with this, it's really hard to get used to, but it's, it's super helpful. So um, in the next video, we're going to talk about saving images and then do a quick exercise before we talk about homework.